Welcome to the Raspberry Pi Workshop Tutorials, brought to you by ModMyPi, BuyAPi.ca, and PyShop.us. In this series of videos, we'll demonstrate nine projects that could be made using the YouTube Workshop Kit for Raspberry Pi. These projects are a great way to familiarize yourself with the Pi's input and output functions, as well as creating programs in Python that we'll use to control the Pi's hardware. In this eighth tutorial, Light Dependent Resistor, we'll use a step response to take readings from our analog RC circuit using the Pi's digital inputs. Let's start creating our circuit. Our code calls for connecting to GPIO3, which is this pin here, the third pin down in the left-hand row. We'll connect that blue wire now to pin three on the Raspberry Pi. Over here on our circuit board, we'll begin with the light dependent resistor, this guy. This lowers its resistance based on how much light there is. So the brighter it is, the less resistance this component experiences. One leg will go here on the board, and the other one goes in the positive power rail. Next we'll add the capacitor. The capacitor is direction sensitive. You'll notice that it has a longer leg, which is the positive, and also that the negative leg is marked with this white stripe on the side. So the negative leg goes in the ground rail, and the positive leg goes in the same channel as our light-dependent resistor. Last, we'll connect the GPIO pin 3, using our blue wire, in between the leg of the resistor and the leg of the capacitor. There are some really unique things about this Tutorial 8 program, so we'd better take a closer look at why this circuit works to help us understand this code. The first important thing to know is that the Raspberry Pi doesn't have an analog to digital converter. All of its inputs are digital. So our resistive capacitive circuit, which has one resistor and one capacitor, basically has an analog output signal that we can't read with the Raspberry Pi unless we get creative. The second point is that all resistive capacitive circuits have a time constant. Based on how much resistance and capacitance there is, the circuit will take a certain amount of time to charge. It's actually the capacitor that's being charged during that time. Because our light dependent resistor lowers its resistance in brighter light, that will result in the fastest charging time for the circuit. This means that if we were to measure the time that it takes for the circuit to charge up from zero up in voltage until it triggers the Raspberry Pi's GPIO high level for the digital signal, we'd have a relative indication of how much time it's taking to charge in this light condition versus that light condition, or how bright or dark it is. Now that we understand what the program should do, let's see how it works out in the code. We'll need a new library called DateTime in order to access time and date features and convert them into strings. The structure of this program is quite simple compared to the last one. We'll use a while true loop to continue taking readings, printing them to the screen, and also printing them to a file as long as the loop is running. This happens every second. To measure the charging time for the circuit, we'll use this function called rctime. We begin by setting a counter called reading to zero, and then setting the pin that we're using to an output in a low condition and pausing for 0.1 seconds. Then when we set the pin to an input, it begins to sense and measure what the voltage incoming is. It's initially in a low digital state. We use this while loop to measure how many times we loop until the Raspberry Pi feels a high state at that pin. 
so we'll end up with a number that's the approximate number of milliseconds that it took the circuit to charge. And that's what gets returned as a result of the function. Looking back inside our main while loop, every time that the program cycles, we're going to find out what date and time it is, store it in a text string, and then print the charging time that we measured. But notice that we're only printing the charging time on screen, not the timestamp also. After that, we'll open a file and write some of our information to it using the FO commands. We'll write the timestamp, a line break, and then the reading value that we took. And then close the file and pause for one second before resuming the loop. Note that each time we open and write to the file, we'll be overwriting what was there before, so we should only ever have two lines of text in our file. Let's exit, save, and run the program. Run the program with sudo python 8 underscore ldr. Now every second on screen, we're seeing a reading of approximately how many milliseconds it's taking for the voltage at the pin to rise from its low state to the digital high state. As we expected, with darker conditions, the reading is higher, and with brighter conditions, the reading is lower. Remember that we're storing one set of readings in our file called foo.txt, so we can use a command like more to show on screen one page at a time of information from that file. Thank you for watching, and please follow us on social media for more Pi projects and resources.